Hi guys, this is Sadek from Drivedon.com and in this video, we'll show you how to flash a firmware on your OnePlus phone which has a locked bootloader. So as you might be aware, when we are flashing a stock firmware or stock ROM, the first requirement is to have an unlocked bootloader and after that you will have to boot your phone to fast boot mode to flash the firmware. Well, when it comes to OnePlus, you could also directly bypass both this requirement and flash the firmware in the emergency download mode also known as EDL mode. Moreover, the firmware will not be a fast boot ROM, rather it will be an OPS firmware which will be flashed using the MSM download tool and this method is applicable across all those OnePlus phone which have a Qualcomm chipset and have a working MSM download tool. You could see a list of all those phones from here. So as of now, I'll be using a OnePlus 9 Pro to get this job done. The only drawback of this method is that you could flash at the very most till the Android 11 firmware. There is no Android 12 or higher version of this firmware, but that's not an issue. If you want, you may use the OTA update to update your phone to the latest build. Still, the major advantage of this method is that it works across both the logged, both the brick and unbrick phones. And apart from that, the obvious advantage is that you don't have to unlock the bootloader. So keeping all this point in mind, let's get started. First off, let me show you the bootloader on my phone is currently logged. So if I go to system and then go to developer option, you could see OEM unlocking is turned off and it's showing as allowed the bootloader to be unlocked. So this signifies that the bootloader is currently logged. Likewise, if I boot my phone to the fast boot mode, it will take only a few seconds. I will show you the status from there as well. I am just booting my phone to fast boot mode to show you the device state. As of now, it should be logged. So as you could see, it's currently logged. So this signifies that the bootloader is currently logged on my phone. So I will now proceed ahead and flash the OPS firmware onto my phone and my phone will then get back to Android 11. Even if you are currently running Android 13 or Android 14, your phone will get back to Android 11. This is a downgrade, but it should not be a cause of any concern. Just make sure to take a backup because the process will wipe off all the data from your phone. Moreover, I will show you the steps for both the bricked and unbricked phone. So keeping that point in mind, let's get started. First and foremost, download the MSM tool from here. And once you have got the tool for your phone, make sure that it corresponds to your re region as well. As of now, I'll be using the India build. So get it from here. And once you have got the tool, simply extract them onto your PC. You could extract them anywhere you want. I have done the extraction over here, as you could see. And this is the OPS firmware. The firmware comes inbuilt with the MSM tool itself. And these are the files of the MSM tool and this is the EXT file. So as of now, we have got the MSM tool. So let's now move ahead with the next step. So once you have got the MSM tool, you will now have to download and, and extract the Android SDK platform tools on your PC. This is optional and only required for those phone which could access the OS. If in your case, your phone is currently hard break, then this is not required. On the other hand, if your phone is currently working well and good, then you could download this tool and extract them onto your PC. And these are the files of the platform tools as you could see. So once we have got this, let's now move ahead with the next step. So now you will have to turn off the driver signature enforcement. If you don't do so, then Windows will not allow us to install the EDL drivers, which is also known as Qualcomm Q QS HS USB QD 9008 USB drivers. So please make sure to disable the driver signature as well. For that, all you have to do is press the Windows icon and then press and hold the shift key. And while holding the shift key, click on restart and your PC will now boot to the Windows rec recovery environment. From there, select troubleshoot, then choose advanced option, then choose startup settings. And now you will have to press either the 7 key or the F7 key. And with this, your PC will automatically restart and the driver signature enforcement will be turned off. Once that is done, we could now proceed ahead with the next step. The next step involves installing the Qualcomm drivers, which is the Qualcomm HS USB QD Loader 9008 drivers, also known as the EDL drivers. So let's proceed ahead and install these drivers onto your PC. Regarding this, there are two methods, the automatic and the manual approach. First off, let's try the automatic method. So for that, you will have to download the Drivers from here is for the 64-bit architecture for most PCs, I guess. Nowadays uses the 64-bit, so get hold of the EXE file, then simply launch it. In my case, I've already installed the driver files 
but still let me show you the setup process it will take only a few seconds so launch the exe file and you will get a prompt on your pc click on yes after that it will take a few seconds and then first and foremost you will have to select the network type which is wwan dhcp and click on next then click on next and in my case i have already installed the drivers so i'm getting this maintenance mode but in your case you will get something along the following lines let me show you you will get the option to install so click on install and then hit the finish key with this the drivers will be installed and we could now move ahead and verify if the drivers have been installed or not if they are not installed then we will have to manually install them as well so first and foremost let's verify if the drivers have been installed or not for that your only course of action is to boot your phone to EDL mode and only then you could verify if the drivers have been installed or not so for booting to EDL mode there are quite a few ways if you could currently access your OS then you could use the ADB command to get this job done using the ADB reboot EDL command likewise on some phones you could also use the fastboot commands as well in case you could also use the magis but in this case in our case the magis will not work because the booter is currently logged and we don't have a rooted phone so this will not work you could either use the first method which is the adb command or the fastboot command if it works or else you always have the universal method of using the hardware key combination so in the first and second method you have to download the android sdk platform tools which we have done and also enable usb debugging on your phone for that you have to go to settings menu then go to about phone and tap on build number seven times this will enable developer option then go to system developer option and enable the toggle next to usb debugging after that you will have to go to the platform tools address bar type in cmd and hit enter this will launch command from inside platform tools now type in adb devices and make sure that you are getting a serial id once you're getting the id you could now use the adb reboot edl command to boot your phone to edl mode apart from that or you could also use the universal hardware key combination the fastboot command does not work in every phone so you could skip this either use the adb method or you could use the hardware key combination let me show you the hardware key combination method now because the adb method is quite easy just have to use the adb reboot edl command on the other hand let me now show you the hardware key combination so for that first and foremost you will have to unplug your phone from the pc from the usb cable once that is done you will now have to turn off your phone so let's power it off in the meantime also keep the device manager opened so right click on the start icon and select device manager then click on device manager and it will now open and now you have to expand the port section so keep the port section open and if the drivers have been installed successfully our phone should now be shown as Qualcomm HS USB QD Loader 9008. On the other hand, if the drivers have not been installed, then our phone will be shown as QHS USB Bulk. And in that case, you will have to manually install the drivers. On the other hand, if your phone is being shown as Qualcomm HS USB QD Loader, but there is a yellow warning sign, then that signifies that you haven't turned off the driver signature enforcement. So please refer to this guide and carry out this task once again and disable the driver signature enforcement i am re repeating once again if you're getting the qualcomm hs qsb loader it's everything is working well and good and you are good to go ahead on the other hand if you're getting a warning sign as well apart from this then you will have to disable the driver signature enforcement on the other hand if you're getting the qhs usb bulk then in that case the drivers have not been installed and you will have to reinstall the drivers using the manual method i'll show you that as well let's first verify the process so first and foremost, we'll have to boot our phone to EDL mode. So for that, turn off your phone. Once that is done, make sure to unplug it from the USB cable as well. Now press and hold the volume up and volume down keys. And while holding both the keys together, you will have to connect the other end of the USB cable to your phone. And you should then see your phone under the port section. And as you could see, our phone is now being shown as Qualcomm HS USB Loader 9008 COM port. So this signifies that our PC, our phone, is now in EDL mode and our PC is able to read the phone in this mode and we could now move ahead with the next step on the other hand so there might be a slight issue as well so as you could see in my case although my phone was booted in EDL mode but it's now rebooting to the OS that is happening because my phone is currently working well and good in case your phone is currently heartbreak then it will stay in the EDL mode 
but still i'll show you a fix for this issue as well as and when the time arises let me discuss first something very important so as of now your phone should be in the edl mode and should be shown something like this but if it's in the as shown as qhs usb bulk then you will have to manually install the drivers for the manual driver installation what you have to do is right click on your phone qhs usb bulk then select update drivers and then choose browse my computer for driver software and then you will have to select the driver zip file from here so this is the qualcomm driver zip file make sure to extract them onto your pc anywhere will do so this is the extracted folder the qualcomm drivers and please make sure to select the entire folder and not just any single file so once you reach this stage so this is the manual installation steps so once you reach here select browse my computer and then choose the entire qualcomm driver folder as you could see from here then click on next and it will now install the drivers once that is done your phone will then be listed as qualcomm hs usb qd loader 9008 so we could now move move ahead however in some cases as you could see in my case as well although my phone was booted to edl mode but it automatically exit that mode and boots with the os let me show you once again if i use the adb command as well my phone will boot to the edl mode for a few seconds and after that it will automatically as you could see it's currently in the edl mode it will remain there in the five for five to seven seconds and then it will automatically boot to the os so why is this happening well our phone remains in the edl mode and wait for any action to process however once it sees that there are no edl interaction going on then it will automatically boot its phone to the os so as soon as you boot your phone to the os or rather as soon as you boot your phone to the edl mode make sure to start the flashing right away so to rectify this issue you will have to make sure that the msm tool is running in the back end so let me show you what i mean if you are also facing the issue of your oneplus phone going back to the os then first and foremost you will have to keep the msm tool open in the back end so let's do that and as soon as the phone boots to the edl mode we could then start the flashing process so you could now see that so launch the msm tool version 4.0 ext file you could ignore the rest of the ext file and then hit the next button in the login screen that appears just a minute so, so hit the next button here and with this the msm tool is now up and running for our phone and as you could see our phone is not connected so it's showing as not available over here so likewise in the device manager as well under the port section our phone is not there so what we have to do now is boot our phone to edl mode and as soon as it boots to edl mode you will have to click the start button right away thereby not giving any time for the phone to boot to the os so you could now use either of the two methods either the hardware key combination or the adb command let me use the adb command it's quite easier so if i use the adb reboot edl so you could see my phone boot to the edl mode in a matter of few seconds so let me show you as you could see it's showing as connected as soon as that happens hit the start key and the flashing will then start and your phone will not be able to boot to the os rather the flashing will start and as you could see your phone will now remain in the edl mode and the flashing will now going will go, now go on until the flashing is complete so again i am repeating if your phone is currently in a hard break state then it might remain in the edl mode and there will be no issues but if you could currently access the os then in that case your phone will boot to the edl mode wait for around 5 to 7 seconds and if it finds that there are no interaction going on in edl mode then it will automatically boot to the os so what you have to do is keep the msm tool open in the back end and only then boot your phone to the edl mode as soon as it boots to edl mode your phone should be shown as connected so just hit the start button and the flashing will now start the flashing could take up to 300 to 400 seconds in some cases it might take even longer if you are coming from a custom rom so let's just wait for the time frame so guys as you could see the flashing is now complete it took around 370 seconds in my case and once the flashing is done your phone will automatically move to the os and let me show you this as well do keep in mind that while flashing it's the super dot super mt or rather the super dot img file which will take the maximum amount of time the rest of the file will only take a few seconds to flash so the super dot img file takes quite a lot of time that is completely normal 
uh, apart from that once the flashing is done the first time boot up of your phone will take up again somewhat longer time this is again normal because the os is being set up from scratch from the subsequent time onwards it will not take that much longer so with that said as you could see the firmware has been flashed and we are now in the os and once again the bootloader on our phone will still be unlocked will still be logged as before so let me show you that as well so okay i'll have to connect to the internet or rather let me show you from the fast boot mode and then let's verify that as well so the bootloader will stay logged on your phone as was the case beforehand it will again stay logged if you want to unlock it you could refer to my guide and the video or simply use the fast boot flashing unlock command to get this job done so as you could see it's currently still logged so with that said we round off this video if you are thinking of what could be the benefit of this video well one of the biggest advantage is the fact that yesterday while flashing i messed up big part and the oem unlock toggle was still disabled and the bootloader on my phone was currently logged so even though i could access the fast boot mode but i was unable to unlock the bootloader because the oem unlock toggle was turned off so if that ever happens with you that you are stuck in a fast boot mode or a boot loop mode and you are unable to access the os and likewise the oem unlock toggle is turned off then you will not be able to unlock the bootloader so in that case you could use the msm tool to flash the firmware and your phone will again be up and running just make sure that you could only flash the ops firmware with this method you cannot flash the fast boot rom or any other type of firmware in case of a log bootloader so on that note i round off this video if you have any queries do let me know in the comment section and thanks a lot for watching